Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your tarot reading. So I can't apologize enough for the delay with this reading. Let's just go into your reading. Um, I got an image that was quite interesting. So first of all, I see a face, okay? A face of a woman. It zooms into her mouth and she has red lipstick on. And uh, she opens her mouth, she like widely, and she wants to, it seems like, shout out something. And so she opens her mouth and I, I, I see her like talking and shouting, but inside of her mouth, there's another set of lips. It was weird. And the, the inner set of lips was closed off. So it seems almost as if you're really holding yourself back this month. Okay, um, you want to say something, but you're kind of like um, deferring back to your better judgment or your higher self, and you're opting not to speak out. Okay, and so l let's look at the cards and let's see how this is really playing out in your life. First of all, um, I see a smugness about you for the month of January, and smug not in a bad way at all. Uh, what I feel is with these two cards, we have here the Hermit. Look at the face of this koala bear. Very smug, right? Working behind the scenes. And then we have the Tower. And look at the face of this iguana. This is sort of like, you know, I told you so. I told you something is going to implode. You didn't listen to me. And look what happened. And this smugness, once again, like I mentioned, it is not anything bad because I do feel like you have this sense of like a, a bubble of protection uh, about you because you've been diligently working behind the scenes, okay? Um, so, what I feel here is there was a situation and I feel like for, for many of you, this is in a workplace type of a environment, also with family members as well where somebody is either veering off on a wrong path, taking, making decisions or making life choices that were not in their favor. And I feel almost like you wanted them to experience it for themselves. You wanted them to, you know, make the decisions and kind of like live with the consequences, not in the spirit of being spiteful, but you also want them to understand, you know, the, the whole concept about live and let live. You want them to understand that with every decision, uh, you have to really anticipate certain outcomes. And if you're making the decision, you need to be able to, to you know, deal with the consequences. That's what it feels like to me. I feel the energy of somebody biting off more than they could chew. And I feel like it's, it's sort of like somebody is reaping their karma, either for being greedy, for being thoughtless, or for being like overshooting, overly ambitious, and rushing into something that they weren't prepared for, okay? And then I also feel as well, for many of you, the smugness comes in the work environment because you have been staying or shying away from the limelight, okay? You did what you needed to do based on your own set of responsibilities. You handled yourself well. You let others hog the limelight, okay? Because you understand that, you know, um, those that want to, it's, it's almost like, you know, the, the tall poppy syndrome. The people that want to steal the limelight, that want to steal the light, I feel like they will be brought down. And so because of it, you're aware that, you know, whoever shines the brightest, a lot of attention will be on them for good or bad. And so you're not in a position where you're hogging the limelight with anybody. You're not putting yourself in that position because you know your skills and your capabilities. And then as a result, when something falls apart, I feel like the brunt of the the blame is either on that person that's hogging all the limelight that talks really big but can't really back up whatever it is with their actions or i also feel like a, a person especially in the work environment and i feel like it's a cluster of people that might have made a lot of drastic decisions too fast too soon 
and they're starting to, you know, re reel from the consequences of that. Starting something too fast, too soon, overly ambitious, overshooting, overshooting the mark, overshooting the target is what I'm sensing here. And I feel like along the way, you know, you had your, your hunches that, oh, this is not going to work. I should say something or I should, you know, um, steer them away from that course of action. But I also feel like they wouldn't have listened anyways. And you're aware of it because, you know, they're, they're, they're banking on their invincibility. That's pretty much what I'm sensing. So I feel like you might have been dealing with someone who's quite arrogant, who's quite hard-headed, who's, who's unable to take constructive criticism. And I feel like they're dealing with the effects of that. All right. And then I also feel you're behind the scenes looking on. Okay. And I keep hearing, you know, I told you so, I told you so, but you're not going to say it. You're not going to gloat. You're not going to rub it in your face. You're in this space where you are protected and shelter. And whatever the effects of this tower situation is happening, the tower is very cataclysmic, right? It's things breaking down and, and, and crumbling to the ground. So it's going to leave like a, a dust cloud in its mist, right? And what I see here is you're protected from it. You're kind of like uh, spectating from afar. You know, the, the, you're far away. There's enough distance between you and that situation where you are protected you're not going to have to inhale that dust cloud and you're 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 sitting pretty pretty much okay so for this month taurus um your energy is um I, I feel like it's a continuation almost of like the aries energy we have here the king of crystals this is the king of pentacles this is your energy you're embodying this really proud mighty um stable energy finances are going to be really good and you've you, you've designed your life that way where you don't need to worry about your financial future things have been worked at built up over time and so you're sitting on your resources and you're planning your next adventure I do feel that, you know, the, this concept about looking uh, off into the distance to kind of dream about, conjure up and trying to figure out where is the next progression for me? What is um, uh, coming in store for me? What's my prospect looking like? What's in the future for me? I feel like change is really coming in and, and, and the message drilling, that's like uh, drilling into this reading is change is very imminent. We have here the Wheel of Fortune, which is about change and possibilities. It's lying right on top of you. And the words associated with this King of Pentacles is courage and commitment, okay? And so I feel like you're kind of torn, okay? Kind of like, do I speak or do I keep quiet? Do I grab this new opportunity or do I speculate some, some more? Or do I just sit in and kind of like behave as a bystander and see how things are going to unfold? So there's something that's being unfold or unfurled or unraveling around you. And you're content just looking on just to see what's going to happen, just to see that you need more information or just to wait for the opportune moment. But I feel like it's coming in really very quickly. And it's something you've been feeling intuitively for quite some time. And yet you're committed to one situation. And I feel like that might be the only barrier preventing you from embracing this new change. So for some of you, this is a job situation where something in the distance, possibly further away physically, like um, a, a change of uh, venue, a change of uh, workplace atmosphere or workplace environment, um, something is further down in the distance or further out in the distance that's really beckoning you, really calling you. And you're not really sure whether or not you should go for it because you are committed elsewhere. So you could be in a contract for a certain amount of months before you can shift into a new job. And you want to write out the contract. 
you could be in a um, like a lease, a, a housing situation, and you're looking for something new, but you're contractually obligated to that lease, or to write out the terms of that agreement before you can shift elsewhere. Or I also feel a situation where it's family. Okay, I want to move further away, but you know, mom and dad are aging, and and they want my presence here. And I also feel family, as in you know, I have a marriage contract here, but I really want to be elsewhere. So I feel like there's a lot of um, there's a lot that you're mulling over, and I definitely feel as well you're pulled in two different directions in terms of you know life direction, in terms of um, do I stay here out of that sheer sense of commitment. Or do I see what other opportunities are available to me? Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here because I I do sense this um, this kind of like night and day type of energy, kind of like waffling, flip flopping back and forth, uh, playing out the scenarios in your mind, but in the waking, it, it's like in in. Mulling over decisions, but the actions are not really being taken in the physical realm. Okay, um, I see as well a lot of juxtaposition in this spread. First of all, we have here the shadow and the light. Okay, so the shadow are things that are kind of like hidden from view, things that are um, not made aware to other people, things that haven't come into being yet. They exist in the, the realm of the mind or in the realm of the shadows. No one is really shining a spotlight on it just yet. And I feel that you're keeping a lot of things, either secrets, longings, desires, really close to your chest, trying to manifest them as best as you can without drawing attention to yourself. And then I also feel like this, this situation where you know the, the animal is sitting still it's like wanting things to come to you, but not really getting out there and take the physical actions in order to move yourself towards it. And I do feel this is a love relationship here. We have as well the King of Cups. Okay, so this is like the epitome of an emotional connection that you have with someone, something that is very transformative. Somebody is bringing into you this sense of like wonder, and what's linked up with the shadow is the sun, and the sun is bringing things to light. It's like it, it basically melts away the shadow, right? And so, what's happening here? I feel. You're drawing somebody very, very close to you, and like I said, you have a really strong emotional connection with this person. I feel for many of you, you might have initiated contact with this person to let them know how you feel, to offer a message, and you know, you, you guys are not like gushy people where you lay your feelings all on the table, take it or leave it, right? You, you're not one to do that. So I feel like, you know, there might have been communication and the communication was very cordial, but it's not indicative of everything that you're feeling. Whatever you're feeling is really very strong. It's very passionate here with the sun card. It's very exalted. It's almost like, you know, what you're feeling, you want to shout it from the rooftop, hence the lips, you know, shouting. I want to make it known. I want to tell this person everything that I've been bottled, um, bottling up. I want to, you know, express my authentic self and express the extent of my emotions. And yet, you might have suppressed it. And you are very aware that this person has a major impact in your life, okay? I'm hearing somebody's name might be, you know, sunshine, might be like someone who's very uh, buoyant and, and optimistic. This is not your energy. This is somebody who's very buoyant and, and optimistic. 
And with the hummingbird, they kind of flit around, you know, going from one place to the next. They might be um, a world traveler. They might have traveled a lot in their lifetime. They might have a lot of interesting tidbits of information that they'd like to share. They might be a great conversationalist. They might know um, uh, a lot of things about a lot of things. And I feel like when you're around them, you feel very hopeful. You feel very pure and innocent. They might be very pure and innocent. And I, I, I just see this kind of like very buoyant person who's very lively, who's very... Who's very hopeful and who, whose presence in your life was, it was very uplifting because with your energy, with the Hermit and the King of Crystals, this is somebody who keeps their distance, right? The Hermit. They look and admire from afar. You might be admiring this person from afar. You might be, you know, checking on their social media to see what this person's up to. But I feel like you keep a very detached and a very um, platonic air about you. Almost as if passing off that they don't mean a lot to you. And I, I feel that you're hold, you have really held back your feelings when you are interacting with this person. And you retreat back into the realm of the mind with this moon, the imagination and perception. And I also feel the moon is about intuition. It's about psychic abilities. It's about wisdom as well with this owl. And so I feel like this person is very aware, like intuitively, and almost in a psychic way, they are aware of your feelings. But not only you hit it verbally, but you also hit it physically. Like you hit the feelings, you, you suppressed it, and you, you kind of crunch it down to the bottom. So it doesn't see the light of day. But I also feel like the connection with this person is very strong. There is a very strong, I feel like psychic and spiritual and emotional connection. It's not just passion and chemistry and fun and, and lightness, but I feel like, you know, it's a very deep, possibly a really strong soulmate type of a connection. Because whatever you suppress, they're able to decipher. Whatever you don't say to them, they're able to hear it, you know, in their psyche. So they're, they're, they're very, very in tune with you. Okay. Um, I also feel as if there is a, a distance between the two of you, either emotional or otherwise, because I do feel like this person, they're able to read you, but I don't feel that you're able to read them. And so you might not feel like they, the feelings are reciprocal. You might not feel like you might not feel like they're on the same page. You might also feel like the weight of your emotions and your feelings are too much for you to handle. And you are afraid that they don't feel the same way. And so you, you kind of, you know, push it down to the edge of your being because you don't want them to know. The, the strength or just, just the, 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 the sheer, like, impact of what you're feeling so I'm, I'm hearing like the word impact but like it's also packing down and then you know impact something is impacted it's packed down it, it's it's like bursting at the seams wanting to speak and, and verbalize something but not being able to not wanting to lose control not wanting to lose control not wanting to be, not wanting to express something when it's not reciprocated. So you're feeling very strongly. You're not able to verbalize it. You're not able to read the other person. You're not able to understand where they're coming from, how they feel about you, whether or not they are feeling the same way that you're feeling. So this is a, it's an uncomfortable place to be. In the meantime though, I'm sensing that you're distracting yourself with, you know, practical things that you're doing. 
I feel many of you are um, taking really good care of yourself physically. Okay. Um, you're feeling vitality. You're feeling good. Like just um, getting over ailments. Feeling kind of like at the peak of your physical best. Taking really good care of yourself. Going to the gym. Lifting weights. Eating well. Getting enough sleep and getting enough rest. Even though this emotional, I, I want to say sore spot, is really front and center in your emotional life, you're doing other things to distra distract yourself because you feel like it's almost silly, okay? It's, it's silly for me to dwell on this. It's silly for me to, you know, constantly think about and ruminate over this person and about what could be. And I feel like at night, you are thinking heavily about this person, about the possibilities that could be if the two of you had come together and then also, you know, um, wanting, like looking at them from afar, admiring them, but not really willing to go out of your way to, I'm hearing here, like saving face, not wanting to appear too demanding or too needy or, you know, playing it cool. Okay. The smugness, like playing it cool, not wanting the other person to know how you really feel. So I, I'm, I'm getting here that for many of you, you know, um, the way you might be looking at love and relationships and emotions, I feel like vulnerability is kind of like a double-edged sword for you. On the one hand, you want desperately to be vulnerable, but for whatever reason, you feel like being vulnerable leads you in a position where you might be uh, overpowered by another person, right? And so what, what I feel is you might have a slightly unhealthy mindset when it comes to relationships, when it comes to, you know, putting our walls down so that the other person can approach us. Because I feel like once you let your walls down, the other person is going to approach you. What they're feeling for you, I can assure you it's being reciprocated with this king of cups this is somebody that doesn't play games this is somebody that is um, very sure about how they feel at all times they can talk to you for hours about their feelings and their feelings don't change it doesn't fluctuate from one day to the next it doesn't change if you behave badly one day they're not gonna love you any less if you act up, they're not going to love you any less. If you show your vulnerability, they're not going to use that against you. This is somebody who is, you know, aware of human emotions. They're very emotionally intelligent. They can look at you and know whether or not you've had a bad day, whether or not you're grouchy, why you're grouchy, and they can say and do things to kind of like, lift you out of it. So I feel like this is a person that has a very good read on you. But the way that you are right here with the shadow, you're kind of like in the dark. You're not really aware of what's approaching. And I also feel like you, you, you might take some type of, of a perverse, you know, um, liking to leaving somebody in the dark not expressing the full extent of your emotions not letting them know and i do sense a lot of it has to do with you know trust issues and, and things like that that you're you're somewhat bringing into this situation and i feel like it might not be fair for the partner that you're dealing with because the relationship seems very cat and mouse and it's not very on the surface. Does that make sense? So please be careful with this. If you are, if this re re um, resonates with you, and if you're dealing with this situation and you feel like being vulnerable leaves you at a disadvantage, I can assure you it does not. And I can assure you as well that the other person is looking your way. And I feel like they would come to you if you let your walls down, okay? So the time for us to experience that paradigm shift, you know, to do things a little bit differently so that we can draw in 
healthier, higher functioning people into our lives. And for us to kind of like live in the light rather than the shadows operating from our shadow self, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to be authentic and we want to be true. And ultimately we want to be free of our baggage that might prevent us from forming emotional connections with another person. Because what you have here is a really beautiful soul connection with another human being. And I feel like you're disallowing that to come into the picture. This card, the way I'm looking at it, is sort of like basking in the sunlight. Lizards and iguanas, they, uh, they're cold-blooded, so you know, they around noon you can see a lot of them just like um sunbathing right so that's what i'm feeling here this sunbathing right next to the sun once your feelings are exposed or once you allow that to kind of um come out into the open i feel that you're going to get a basking in the sunlight moment where feelings are being returned and reciprocated and you're not going to be in a state of, you know, icy isolation or doom and gloom. You're going to experience a lot more happiness in your life, okay? Um, I do feel for many of you, you are aware of this. This moon is all about intuition. It's, a, it's like a sense of knowing. Knowing what we need to do, but dragging our feet, right? A, a lot of us, especially fixed signs. So you guys, um, Leo, so Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, we, we're, we're very good at this. We know exactly what we need to do, but then we are so stubborn that we don't really do it. And I feel like this might be a challenge for you in the month of January, but I also do see it extending across 2020 if we're not careful. So, um, you know, you, you want to work with this energy, operate from the light rather than the shadow side, okay? Um, so once again, I, I feel like you have enough, you know, self-awareness and you guys are smart and you guys are just, um, you have a really good read on people, I sense, and you are the keen observer, okay? This is somebody who is like a spectator, okay? Looking from the sidelines. Wanting to experience life, wanting to grab life by the horns, but really fearful. And I also feel that you are aware enough and awakened enough to understand that this is one of your hangups with this moon here. This is about higher wisdom, right? And I'm sensing for the very first time you're able to tell yourself and you're able to verbalize your thoughts, like put your thoughts into words. There was something that you thought, you know, I could do without it. I, 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 I'm still happy, you know, it doesn't detract from my life in any way. However, for the very first time, you're no longer putting up with the pretense, okay? Ten of Cups, total emotional happiness, okay? However, I'm looking at this pelican and he's very lonely. He's collecting material goods. He's collecting things, trinkets, shiny objects to add to his collection. But what's really lacking here with this Ten of Cups is the emotional connection with another human being or even with another of his kind, okay? So I, I do sense that you might have buried yourself at work in work, you might have worked very long hours, you might have, you know, built up your empire, but you're longing to have that person to share the, 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 the life, life with, to share, to experience these moments with you. When you're proud of yourself, of your achievements, you want somebody to be there to kind of um, congratulate you, to share that experience with you. And I feel as if you might have, it was all just work, work, work. It was all just, you know, empire building, expansion. And it's gotten to the point where you can no longer, I feel, deny yourself of this. Because once we become aware of what it is that we're really 
looking for and we're able to tell ourselves and verbalize it i feel like the 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 verbal part is so important especially with the lips that i saw earlier wanting to shout out but you know holding back wanting to scream but no sound came out i'm i'm feeling like you can no longer pretend like it's not something that you want because you have already met you know what it is that um you have already tasted or you have already experienced or you have already seen what it is that you want and you know cats out of the bag we can't really you know rescind we can't really push things back we we can't really hide things something is being exposed in the light and it can't crawl back into the shadows and pretend that you know life goes on right I feel like there might have been a communication between you and another another person. And I'm stumbling over my words a lot with your reading, and I feel like something might have been uttered too fast too soon. And you're recoiling. I feel like you might be a little bit embarrassed. And you don't need to be because what I feel here is a lot of love, a lot of attraction, a lot of like a, a really strong emotional connection. and the other person wants if anything more of it more of that display of uh, abandon you know um they don't want to see the control towards you know they don't want you to to see you kind of like shy away hiding from the limelight and you know not knowing where you are and not knowing what you're up to and not knowing whether or not you said it uh, whatever you said was um sincere so i feel like you might be confusing another person So yeah there is a shyness um I feel like there's a reluctance possibly because of shyness I feel like you feel as if you said too much and now you're trying to hold back so like you're operating from like the opposite end of the spectrum here Okay so Let me just leave that thought alone. I want to talk about the last four cards because they are echoing the 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 same themes here. I touched on this very briefly at the beginning of the reading. Um There's a situation here that's really drawing you to it, okay? And it, I I feel like the spiritual message for your reading for this month is go for it. you you have to go for it but yet you're digging your heels in you're comfortable where you are but like i said you know once we are made aware of what we want what we want to have who we want to be with that knowledge can't disappear it can't be shoved down and 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 packed down to the bottom of our being and it can't slink back away into the shadows like it can't be hidden any further okay so on a side note i feel like somebody might be coming out of the closet okay and the best of luck to you if that's what you're dealing with and i feel like it takes so much courage for people to you know live a life that is authentically them without having to cater to anybody So if you're dealing with this, I feel that you are going to get the support and the love of your family, your loved one even. So, you know, whoever it is that you're trying to, you know, for example, if you're uh, in a same sex like um situation where you're attracted to a member of the same sex and you're not really sure how they're going to receive this, I feel like the 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 feelings and the attraction is very mutual. And so you don't have to be afraid. And I also feel if you do come out, your family and your loved ones, people that matter anyways, will be very supportive, okay? So that's what I mean. I I just feel like something is being hidden. And you know, it's like you've already experienced what it's like to bask in the sun, to be authentic. And now we can't revert back to that shadow side anymore, okay? Um I'm sensing that something is really drawing you and something is really pulling you away from from wherever you are. You're looking at it and you're conjuring up all the wonderful things 
that will come into being if you take this opportunity and yet you're very very hesitant and a lot of you are very hesitant because you've had a rough upbringing I have here the um, page of swords and the raccoon raccoon are, are pretty much scavengers right we've taken over their habitat and so they're digging through our trash they're um, eating whatever we have lying around right and so what I feel is this is a, a past or an upbringing that was lacking in material wealth, that was lacking in resources, okay? You've had to be very resourceful to make ends meet, to take care of yourself. And from these humble beginnings, you've made it and you've become very financially solid, just solid, okay? And so you're very risk averse. You don't want to make a wrong move. You don't want to fall from your pedestal. You don't want to miscalculate. You might have witnessed that miscalculation from somebody who, you know, was quite arrogant. And you saw them tumbling down, falling off their pedestal. You don't want the same thing to happen to you. And so you're very meticulous and methodical about the things that you're willing to undertake and I feel almost like you're turning your back away from this opportunity you're turning your back from this opportunity or turning away from this opportunity because it comes with it a lot of risk okay it comes with a lot of risk it could be a move that you're not sure if you're gonna like the new city it could be a change in venue and you're not sure if you should sell your house. It could be a new person and you're not really sure. Are they fickle or are they going to be there for me for the long haul? Are they a shapeshifter? Because this is an octopus, but also like a cuttlefish. You know, the, the kind that blends in with their environment. Is this like a social chameleon or are they very sincere with the way they feel about me? And so there's a lot at stake here. And I do see this push and pull uh, tug of war that's internal to you. And you're not really sure which direction you should head to. I'm gonna pull out a few more cards because this is interesting. And I hope I can you know, provide you with guidance, for, especially for those who are dealing with this. Give me some advice for Taurus, please. I love this deck, by the way. This is the Spirit Song Tarot. Uh, this is by one of my favorite artists. Her name is, Poli uh, is Paulina Cassidy. I'm stumbling over words a lot with your reading, so I feel like you want to say some things, but you're very afraid. You're very nervous, potentially. I got this as a uh, Christmas present from my sister. Who is an earth sign? It's a great gift. So let's see. Advice, please, for Taurus. Can you give me advice for Taurus? Okay. Okay, the whirl. And uh, we have here the whale. Fulfillment and celebration. Okay, so once again, I can't stress enough. Whatever it is that you're being divinely guided to do, you're going to feel this like um, this this pull. It's very inexplicable, and I feel like you know with, with the the sonar emitted by the whales, the message cannot be heard by other species, right? The message cannot be heard and and so I feel like there is a divine calling here telling you to go for it telling you to you know cast your fears aside whales are deep sea creature animals okay they can uh, live in the depths of the ocean and they're very strong and resilient and they have a really long lifespan as well and so what I feel here is um, better late than never that you have a whole world and a whole lifetime ahead of you 
And so whatever age you are right now, if you're hesitant about making a career change, for example, it's telling you that, you know, you're not too old. Time is all relative. And don't let this be a hang up and don't let this be something that per, like an obstacle preventing you from achieving or going for something that you really want just because you feel like, oh, I'm too old. I'm too old to start a new job. I'm too old to, you know, uh, switch houses. I'm too old to get out of this relationship that I'm not happy with and find somebody else. A lot of the times earth signs have this ingrained sense of commitment. They're unhappy. But because they took that vow, because they, they have that, you know, entrenched sense of fidelity and commitment, that they stay in situations that might not be good for them. And especially as a fixed sign, you're doubly so. So I feel like there is a calling here. And I, I also feel like, you know, I'm reminded to say, it's not too late. You're not too old. Whatever age you are when you're watching this, you're not too old. Go for it, okay? Um, fulfillment is screaming out really loudly here. So I feel like whatever you've been afraid to do, go for it. Speak your mind. Speak your emotions. Verbalize it because I feel like it, it needs to be brought to the open. It needs to be brought to the light. It needs to be brought to the light. It needs to be expressed in a sincere way. And so you're feeling something, but you're shying away from your emotions as well, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, um, Taurus, because that is like a singular message that's coming out loud and clear. So I hope that resonates with you. I hope that, you know, I change your mind about this. And I hope that it is helpful for you as we progress through January uh, 2020. We're at the beginning of the year, okay? Whatever you set your intentions now, it's going to... Um, it's going to be carried carried with you through the entirety of 2020 so it would be good to you know set your intentions to live life with a lot less emotional burden to live away from the shadows and to do things in the light of day okay um i wish you the best take care of yourself and for those who are interested in a reading i have a colleague um, out of California. Her name is Bridget and I've included a link to her um, website where you can schedule a reading and book a reading for yourself. The link is in the description box below. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a blessed, wonderful January 2020.